This is the FMAC Retro Radio Show, one of the weekly features of FMAC's All-Star Festival of Comedy, Music, Mystery, and Drama. Brought to you by Port Blakely, Winston Creek Carbon Project on 10, 10,000 acres in Lewis County is certified by the American Carbon Registry. Rivers Coffee House, now with a new and improved kitchen. And our star sponsor, Hampton Lumber. What would we do without them? <laughs> but first, Ret FMAC Retro Radio proudly presents the Silver Sisters. Dorothy on Alaska, Roxanne Randall, Geneva, uh, Geneva Puyallup, and Pearl Packwood. Are we ready, ladies? I know a ditty, naughty as a fruitcake, goofy as a goon, and silly as a loon. Some call it pretty, others call it crazy, but they all sing this tune. Star and put it in your pocket, sing 
If you want your dinner, Mr. Earnshaw, you'll not be calling me out of the kitchen for. And who is this young imp? Ask him yourself, Ellen. Who are you, lad? What's your name? Leave me alone. I didn't ask for nothing. Leave me alone. I'll wager he's a gypsy boy. I found him starving in the streets of Liverpool, kicked and bruised and nearly dead. This young animal should have a place to live. He'll live with us. Full of glowering hate, like a dog that's been kicked. He'll bite right enough. A kicked dog finds a new master. I broom for him, and Kathy and Henley have need of a friend. If Mrs. Earnshaw were only alive. Don't lecture me, Ellen. Go in and get the lad something to eat. Oh, he could do with it. That's a certainty. And send the children out. Well, youngin, do you think you'll like it here? You can make me stay. No, I can't. That will be up to you. But first, we'll have a name for you. Once I had a brother, his name was Heathcliff. So will be yours. Come, darling, Ellen says you brought us something. What did you bring us? What is it? Kathy, Henley, this is a friend who's come to live with us. His name is Heathcliff. He's dirty. Kathy, don't make me ashamed of you. We've got no room for him. He'll sleep with you in your room, Henley. No, he can't. I won't let him. Children, he's a poor, unfortunate child. Don't be selfish. Well, I guess he can stay. And you, Henley? Why doesn't he talk? He'll find his voice in time, won't you, lad? Yes. Thank you. Helen scrubbed and scrubbed, and underneath the rags and dirt there was a boy. A great shock of black hair tumbling over black eyes. Black eyes that led deep into some terrible hurt. But soon, Heathcliff stood straight in his new clothes. He talked, he smiled, and even laughed. Look! Look, Kathy! Heathcliff, you're the king of the castle. It's not a castle, Kathy. It's just a rock. Pity stone crag. No, it isn't. It's a castle. And you're the king and I'm the queen. Kathy, don't play with him! Oh, it's Henley. He's coming up here. Don't play the gypsy scum, Kathy. He's that he's the king of the pedestal crack. I'm the king. You clear out of here, Heathcliff. I won't. You will or I'll bash your head with this rock. Heathcliff, look out. I'll kill you. No, you won't. You're a coward. I will. I will. Ah. Heathcliff. Heathcliff, you've killed him. Gypsy filth. I'm going to tell father. You can't. Father's sick. The doctor says he can't go now until he's well. Father's sick and I'm glad, because he took the gypsy scum into our house. Ah. Uh, Heathcliff? Heathcliff, are you alright? You never had a father, you dirty beggar. And you can't have mine. You can't! Oh, Heathcliff, there's blood on your face. Yes. Are you hurt badly? Why don't you cry? I'll pay him back, if it takes forever. Get up, Heathcliff, my king. I'm not a king. It's true, Heathcliff. Your father is the emperor of China, and your mother an Indian queen. You were kidnapped by wicked sailors and brought to England. And now this is your castle, Penistone Crag. Oh, Kathy, I can only be happy with you. We'll be happy here, together. Let's never leave our castle. Never in our lives. Kathy, I met Ellen down below. Well? She was looking for us to tell us about father. Henry, is something wrong? He's dead. M M Mr. Earnshaw? <coughs> dead? Oh, Heathcliff. Father. We'll go to him, Kathy. Not you. You're not wanted in that house. He loved me more than he did you. My father's past that now. Go to the stables. That's where you belong. In the stables! Kathy? Kathy, do as you're told. I master here now. And so we grew up. No more so. No longer a playground, but a lonely barrier. Hindley was master, master of Wuthering Heights. But as the years sped by, 
My brother never quite mastered the art of drinking, try as he did. And he was never master of Heathcliff nor me. This bloody bottle's empty. Ellen, Ellen, bring me another bottle. Henry, you'll make yourself sick. You'd like that, wouldn't you, my dear sister? You and that skulking beast of a stable boy. If he gives the stable boy, you made him so. Then join him. Roll in the mud with him, in the slop of the stable. Gypsy devil. Ellen, bring me a bottle. Henry was master, but Heathcliff and I still met in the evening at Pennystone Crag, our castle, and I'd wear a spray of heather in my hair. Kathy. Oh, my sweet Kathy. I'm not. I'm not your Kathy. Then whose are you? My own. I belong to myself. But you still meet me here at the Crag. You're still queen. Not yours. I shouldn't talk to you at all. Look at yourself. It's dirty work that I do. Heathcliff, why don't you run away? Be a man. Go away from Wuthering Heights and become oh, rich and worldly and powerful. And lonely and miserable and lost without you. Oh, you could come back for me. Afterwards. Why afterwards? Come with me now. Where? Anywhere. England's big. The world's bigger. I'd love you and cherish you, Kathy. And lead the life of Gypsy. Live in haystacks and beg for pennies. No, we could. That is not what I want. No, not you. Love isn't what you want. Silk dresses and soft hands. Well, take them then, and you shan't have me. Oh, Heathcliff. I do love you. I do. It won't do to send me off, Captain. I've stayed here to be beaten like a dog, abused and cursed and driven mad. But I'll stay to the end with you, here to live and die under this rock. Oh, Heath, look at the big house. It's all lit up. The Lintons must be having a party. And your head and your heart and your eyes are full of it. Oh, that's what I want. Oh, the dancing. And the lights. Someday I'm going to have it. Without me, then. Well, come, Heathcliff. We'll go to the Grange. We'll look into the Linton's window and see it all. And when you see it, you'll want it too. I know you will. Come on, Heathcliff. Come on. Kathy, wait for me. Come on, Kathy. Heathcliff. It's fine. Come on. Kathy. Kathy. Here, Heathcliff. The window's open. We can see. See what? A herd of idle cows? Oh, look. There's Edgar Linton. Isn't he handsome? And there, his sister Isabella. What a lovely gown. We've no right here. we better go. No! Oh, the dancing and the singing and the lights. Someday I'll have a gown just like Isabella Linton's. And you'll have a red velvet coat with silver buckles on your shoes. I'll have you, Kathy. And the devil take the rest of it. I'll... Oh. He's left! Don't move, Kathy. We should have known Linton would have his watchdog set for such as us. Run, Heathcliff. Run! Edgar? The dogs have caught a couple of thieves. Hold them, Nasha! Call off your dogs, you fool! Nasha, here, Run. dog. Here, boy. Run, my leg. Run, Heathcliff. Run away. Isabella, it looks like, like the Earnshaw girl. She's hurt, Edgar. I'll get some water and some bandages. All right, everybody. I'll take care of this. Back to the party. Enjoy yourselves. 
You'll be all right, Miss Earnshaw. My sister's gone for some bandages. If your dogs have injured her. Aren't you the Earnshaw stable boy? I'm Kathy's friend. Miss Earnshaw roaming the county with a gypsy stable boy. Heathcliff, help me. You mustn't move, Miss Earnshaw. I'll take care of her. Don't you touch her. Get off this property. I won't leave without Kathy. The music. We're going, Kathy. No. I mean, Mr. Linton is right. My leg. Now, will you go, or shall I have you thrown out? All right. I'm going from here, and this cursed country both. Heathcliff. But I'll be back in this house one day, Mr. Edgar Linton, and I'll bring it down around your head in ruins. That's my curse on you. Concludes the first act of Wuthering Heights, starring Bartholomew Winlock, Luella Cinnabar, Dolores Mayfield, Gracie Glenoma, and Maxine Tomwater. Why, here's Maxine now. Hi there, Maxine. How have you been? Oh, I'm swell. Thanks for asking. I'm headed to Mossy Rock next week. The Vikings manager gave me a job as coach. Oh, tell me which players are on your team. Well, I'll tell you their names, but these ball players have very peculiar names. Like what? Well, let's see. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. Well, that's what I want to find out. <laughs> I say, who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. Are you the coach? Yes. And you don't know the fellows' names? Well, of course I do. Well, then who's on first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name. Who? The guy on first. Who? The guy playing... Who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's it. That's who? Yes. Look, you got a first baseman? Certainly. Who's playing first? That's right. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. <laughs> All I'm trying to find out is who's, is what's the guy's name on first base? No, what is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? One base at a time. Well, don't change the players around. I'm not changing nobody. Take it easy. I'm only asking you, who's the guy on first base? That's right. Okay. All right. <laughs> What's the guy's name on first base? No. What is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. We're not talking about him. <laughs> Now, how did I get on third base? You mentioned his name. If I mentioned the third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third? No, who is playing first? What's on first? What's on second? I don't know. He's on third. <laughs> there I go, back on third again. Look, you got out, you got an outfield? Sure. The left fielder's name. Why? I just thought I'd ask you. Well, I thought I'd tell you. Then tell me who's playing left field. Who's playing first? I'm not. Uh, stay on the infield. I want to know what's the guy's name in left field. No, what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. <laughs> the left fielder's name. Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. Look, you got a pitcher on this team? Sure. The pitcher's name? Tomorrow. You don't want to tell me today? I'm telling you now. Then go ahead. Tomorrow. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow are you going to tell me? Now listen, who's not pitching? I want to know what's the pitcher's name? What's on second? I don't know. Third, Third base. 
Okay, let's say I'm playing catcher. I'm gonna throw the guy out at first base. So I pick up the ball and I throw it to who? Now that's the first thing you've said right. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. You throw it to who? I throw the ball to who? Whoever it is drops the ball and the guy runs a second. Who picks up the ball and throws it to what? What throws it to, I don't know. I don't know, throws it back to tomorrow. Triple play. Another guy gets up and hits a long fly ball to because. Why? I don't know, he's on third and I don't give a darn. What? I said I don't give a darn. Oh, that's our shortstop. <laughs> Maxine Tumwater, ladies and gentlemen. This is the FMAC radio show. We continue with second act of Wuthering Heights, sponsored by Arbor Health, Morton's Market, and Colton's Pharmacy. And starring Gracie Glenoma, Maxine Tumwater, Frederick Mineral, and Molly Masira. Fall passed into winter, and I remained in the home of Edgar Linton and his sister Isabella. And I stayed and stretched in luxury, and thought not at all of my brother Henry and his hateful ways, and thought much of Heathcliff, and wondered at his adventures in the world beyond the moors. But most of all, I thought of Edgar, handsome and considerate. Edgar, beside me driving across the snow-covered moors, to Wuthering Heights. Ellen! Kathy! Welcome home, Kathy! Oh, thank you, Ellen. Look at you, as lovely as a princess. Isn't it a beautiful dress? Edgar's sister lent it to me. Oh, Edgar, you'll come in for a cup of tea. As soon as I tend to the horses. The stable boy will do that, Mr. Linton. Heathcliff! Heathcliff? Oh yes, he's back. But how? What? Came skulking back last week with great talk of lying in a lake of fire. Heathcliff? You go ahead, Kathy. I'll join you after I tend to the animals. Thank you, Edgar. You the best go into the house. I'll find that Heathcliff. Yes, I'll go inside. Kathy! You came back. You came back to Wuthering Heights. To sneak behind doors? I had to see you alone. You're filthy again. Why did you stay in that house so long? Because. Not happy. Well, because I was having a wonderful time. A wonderful, fascinating, delightful time. With no thought of me. Yes, with thoughts of you, Heathcliff. With thoughts of you as a free man. Free of my brother's house. And free of you. Now look at you. I have a guest, and you shame me. Your hands, your face, your hair, your clothes. Get out! Go out the back way so we shan't see you. Kathy, I love you. Oh, get out! Yes, I'll go. Separable. Oh, Heathcliff. Just make yourself comfortable, Mr. Linton. I'll fix some tea. Kathy, I couldn't help seeing through the window. Yes? It's just that I can't understand why your brother allows that gypsy to have full run of his house. Indeed. And perhaps it's I who allow it. How can you do it? A roadside beggar treating you as an equal? Heathcliff is my friend. As a child, perhaps. As a child and always. I love him. What? That stable boy? Yes, that stable boy. I love him and I hate you. Now get out. Leave me alone. Kathy. Oh, get out. All right, Kathy. Ellen. Ellen. I'm going out. To Pennystone Crack. Heathcliff! Heathcliff! Kathy! 
Kathy, where are you? Here. Oh, here I am. I knew you'd wait for me at our castle. Oh, I had to tell you. I didn't mean the things I said. It's just that, oh, Heathcliff, I'm bad and willful and, and proud and ambitious. You're the only thing that truly matters. Oh, Heathcliff, hold me. Never let me go. We're part of all this. The moors, the winds, the crags. We're part of each other. Bound together by a love that's fiercer than anything else. Oh, Ethan, hold me. Kathy, you're not thinking of that other world now. No. no. But even as he held me, I couldn't help myself. I imagined the lovely music in the Linton home. the golden ceilings, and myself in a, in a beautiful silken gown. I loved Heathcliff, but I thought of what it would be like to be married to Edgar. The next day, I wrote him a letter. I apologized, and Edgar, darling Edgar, accepted my apologies. Yes, you're beautiful, Captain. Who gave you the right to enter this room, Heathcliff? He's coming here tonight, isn't he? What business is it of yours? Kathy, Kathy, what are you doing to me? Take a stick, beat me, hurt me, but don't do this. I love you with all the love that's in me, and you love me. Why isn't that enough? I'll not have my choice of friends dictated. You're not going to sit all evening simpering at his stupid talk. I am, I am. And he's not stupid. He's smart and clever and gentle. And much more entertaining than a stable boy. Don't talk like that, Kathy. If you don't want to hear me, then go away. This is my room. Not a room for servants with insults and dirty hands. So you'll talk me now, like the rest of them. You had your chance to make something of yourself. Let go of me. Yes, the dirty bull stable boy may soil your dress, but who soils your heart? Who turns you into a vain, cheap little fool? Edgar, so go to him, if it pleases your stupid, greedy vanity. It pleases me that I'll never see you again. Never! And you never will. This time I'll go and I'll stay. Kathy, what are we doing? <laughs> Ellen. Oh, it's you. Edgar, has he gone? <gasps> Your hands! Curse my hands. I want to crawl to her feet, whimper to be forgiven for loving her. I don't care if she loves Linton or who she loves. If she'll only look at me and say my name. You'll not want to see, not want to hurt to see those hands. Quick, behind this cupboard. Ellen! Ellen, are you in the kitchen? Quickly! You are here. Did you call? Yes. And I've got a secret. Ellen, Edgar has asked me to marry him. Uh, perhaps you shouldn't be telling me, Miss Cathy. I told him I'd give my answer tomorrow. Do you love him? Oh, yes, Ellen. Why? Why? Well, because he's handsome and nice, and because he'll make me the finest lady in the county. And Heathcliff? I wish he hadn't come back. How could I marry him? I degrade myself. Then take your love, Kathy Earnshaw. Take it, and may it rip you like a knife. I'm through with you, for good and all. Heathcliff! Kathy, I tried to stop you. He's going away. You don't love him. Love him? Whatever our souls are made of, Heathcliff and I are the same. 
You can't go out, Kathy. The storm! I've got to find him when your brother comes home. Oh, oh, Alan. If everything in the world died and he had remained, life would be full for me. I must stop him. Oh, Kathy! Run after that scum letter. Let her run through the storm and hell. They're birds of a feather and the devil take them both. Now get me a bottle. I'm going to Linton Grange. This night we'll have need for Mr. Linton and his servants. Oh, may God have mercy on her soul and yours. Heathcliff! Heathcliff! Here, Isabella. I'll put her on the bed. Will she be all right? I think so. We'll need a strong fire and lots of dry towels. Where did you find her? At the foot of Peniston Crag on the moor, with the life nearly out of her. Where am I? Was that you? Kathy. My darling. It's Edgar and my sister. Isabella. Go on out and hurry and get that brandy. I'll bring some blankets. Did I, did I find you? No, Kathy dear. It was I who found you. But now I'll keep you forever. Return shortly with Act 3 of Wuthering Heights, sponsored by Rod's Tire Source, Alta Forest Products, and the East County Journal, and starring Bartholomew Winlock, Luella, Luella Cinnabar, Dolores Mayfield, Gracie Glenoma, Maxine Tumwater, Frederick Mineral, Molly Mossyrock, Ethel Sulcombe, and Maximilian Morton. And here's Max now. Hiya, Max. You're looking especially dapper today. Why, thank you. You know the most important thing I wear every single day? Can you guess what it is? Mm. Is it your hat? No, it's not my hat. Your suspenders. I do love my suspenders, but no. Well, I know it's not deodorant. Hey, all right, I'll tell you. It's the same thing the employees at Morton's Market and Cole's Pharmacy wear every single day. Hey, poor oh woman, hey, Dapper Dan, you both got your style, but probably you're never fully dressed without a smile. Your clothes may be both probably, they stand out of mouth, but probably you're never fully dressed without a smile. Who cares what they're wearing on Main Street or South Hill Road? What you wear from ear to ear, and not from head to toe that matters. So senator, so janitor, so long for a while, remember you're never fully dressed. Though you may wear the best, you're never fully dressed. Radio Show, brought to you by Security State Bank. Banking you can trust. Easy storage, because storing your stuff shouldn't be ha hard. It should be easy. A and ALP Accounting, the best place to get your taxes done, because, well, TurboTax hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> and now we resume with the third and final act of Wuthering Heights. Starring Bartholm... Uh, uh, <laughs> you know the names of the cast already. <laughs> Enjoy the show! 
<laughs> At Linton Grange, for the second time, I recovered from an illness. Under the sweet, gentle care of Edgar and Isabella, my body grew stronger. How are you today, Kathy? Healthy as a horse and just about ready to go back to my own pasture. Must you, Kathy? Well, I can't stay here forever. I want you to remain here forever. Once before you asked me to marry you. And you gave me no answer. No, I didn't. I couldn't. I was lost in the moors, lonely and desolate. And what you said was true. There was a strange curse on me, making me wild and uncontrollable. And now, Kathy? Would you love me always? Always. Always. Yes. I'll marry you, Edgar. That summer, I married Edgar and became mistress of Linton Grange. Wuthering Heights was an eternity away. My brother Henley concentrated on drinking his way to an early grave and gambling his way to poverty. Edgar was attentive and loving. So the years passed. There was no fire, but our life was warm. A glass of port to top off a fine dinner, Kathy. Not for me, dear. Isabella. But certainly for me. Here you are. I only wish you'd accept a husband with such alacrity. Excuse me, I'll go and see who's at the door. You may spare yourself the pains, Mr. Linton. Well, who the devil? Heathcliff? You must control yourself, Kathy. I'm not a ghost. Well, thank you for calling on us. Will you sit down? This is my sister, Miss Linton. Miss Linton? How do you do? Have you no greeting for me, Kathy? You've changed. Yes. You seem to have prospered, Heathcliff. These clothes? Yes. I'm quite the gentleman now. I have prospered, and that makes all the difference, doesn't it? We've wondered about you, about where you went. America. And did you find and discover gold in the new world, or perhaps make your fortune in furs? The truth, Miss Linton, is that I remembered my father was an emperor of China, and my mother an Indian queen. I simply went out and claimed my inheritance. Now you're here again, for a visit? Until I die, I have just bought Wuthering Heights. What? That's impossible. Kathy, your brother would sell. Oh, her brother did, but quite unwittingly. I'm afraid it will be an unpleasant surprise when Hindley discovers his gambling debts and liquor bills have been paid up for him by his former stable boy. You've cheated him. He cheated himself the day he was born. By heavens, you're an underhanded dog. I'll not have a thief in my home. I am neither thief nor dog, merely your neighbor, sir. It occurs to me that I have not congratulated you on your marriage. I have thought much about it. Allow me to express my delight over your happiness now. Good night. Edgar, why did he come? I'm afraid. I think you're both afraid. Isabella. What did you think of this stable boy? I thought, I thought him fascinating. And I wonder what poor Henley would think. You blackguard! Get out of Wuthering Heights. You mustn't excite yourself, Henley. Here, I'll pour you a drink. Mr. Heathcliff, the doctor said... Hold your tongue, Ellen. Henley, my money has brought you drink and adventure at the gambling tables. And now I even provide you a solace against the doctor's orders. The drink is killing him. And what difference to the world if he's drunk or sober or dead for that matter? Here, Hindley, drink. I'll drink. To your soul rotting in hell, 
Ellen, get out of here. I, I'll go. Emily, I remember that you once gave me a place to sleep when you might have thrown me out. And now I allow you to remain. Filthy cur. You'll remain here, Hindley, in the stables, in the filth, where I can laugh at you and think what a colossal joke I played, where I can see you and speak the words, I've paid you back. I'll kill you. You got the swine, you. Ha, you wouldn't have the courage to kill me if I put the weapon in your hand. Now go to the stables. Have my land back. Have everything back. See you dead. Master Hindley! Don't touch him, Ellen. Let him find his own way. I came to tell you there's a lady outside from the Grange. A lady? Take that drunken lot away. Kathy! It's not Kathy. Oh, Miss Linton. Won't you come in? Sit down. And what do I owe this visit? My horse. I think he's gone lame. I was riding nearby and... And so you brought him here. Quite right. Shall we have a look at him? No, not now. I wish to apologize for my brother and his wife. They acted most shamefully. Did they send you here? No. I think perhaps they even forbid you to come to Wuthering Heights. I have a mind of my own. Then I assume we are to be friends? I hope so. And perhaps we'll celebrate our friendship with a gallop over the moors. But my horse. It's lame. My dear, there's nothing wrong with your horse. You came to me because you're lonely in your brother's house. There's loneliness in your face and in your eyes. I know it signs too well. But you won't be lonely anymore. Heathcliff's return set strange, half-felt emotions coursing through my mind, like dark shapes at the bottom of a pool. And I was afraid. I didn't see him again until one night, three weeks later, when Edgar and I gave a ball. Kathy, darling, is that... It is. It is a bit. Did you invite him? Of course not. Then it must have been Isabella. Edgar, you've got to stop this. But how? By, by opposing her will, that will only inflame her. This situation will run its course harmlessly, I'm sure. Why don't you dance, my dear? Kathy, I brought you out here to see if you're afraid to be alone. We've just put these vines on the terrace. I think they're very attractive. Don't you? It hasn't come to this small talk. You're much changed, Heathcliff. I can't help remembering how things used to be. They used to be better. You're living well. I don't call it living to hang in fancy clothes outside the gates of someone else's heaven. Oh, Kathy, can't you see that my heart is breaking for you? I forbid this talk. I can hear your heart louder than your voice. It says, Heathcliff, I love you. I've always loved you. Nothing can truly keep us apart. If you haven't changed, I have. I'm married to another man, and he loves me, and I love him. Not the way you loved me. You could never love like that again. Though every force of man in the universe forbid it, there's no one tying the past. You're my wife, not his. Heathcliff, for the love of heaven, don't. Don't. Kathy, have you seen Heath? Oh, here you are. Yes, I was just going in. Are you coming, Heathcliff? No, I think I'll stay out here with Isabella. By your attractive vines. Then, stay here. Was Kathy, was Kathy behaving horribly again? You mustn't blame her. If she weren't my sister-in-law, I'd say she was jealous. Then let her be. We're free, you and I, to do as we please. And I please to kiss you. Bye, darling. Oh, wasn't it a wonderful party, Kathy? You fool! You'll 
you, little fool. Kathy! You behaved disgracefully tonight, asking him here, throwing yourself at him. You are jealous. Haven't you eyes? Don't you see that Heathcliff has been using you? <clears throat> yes, he flirts with you, so that he can smile at me behind your back. He's trying to rouse something in me, in my heart, that's cold and dead. And I will not allow you to help him any longer. How tortured you must be when you know it's me that Heathcliff loves. It's not so. He told me so. No. He's held me in his arms and he's kissed my no. lips and my hair no. and my throat. Stop! It's true. And there's more, Catherine. He's asked me to marry him. You can't. Edgar won't permit it. Edgar? Heathcliff isn't a man. He's a devil. Horrible and evil. If you see these things in him, they're reflections of yourself. You're going mad with pain and jealousy, and because you want him to pine for you and dream of you while you live your snug, secure life as Mrs. Linton. And if you feel these things, Kathy, I'm sorry for you, because I'm going to marry Heathcliff. Well, Kathy, I've heard it said you've never set foot in Wuthering Heights, but here you are. I haven't come for myself. For what, then? For whom? For Isabella. Heathcliff, you do this villainous thing. Villainous? To marry a woman who loves me. But you don't love her. Why are you doing this? She hasn't harmed you. You have. Then punish me. I'm going to, Kathy. Each time I hold her in my arms, each time I touch her lips, each time I promise her life and happiness. You'll marry Isabella. For that? Yes, for that. Revenge. What else have you to offer me? Not love, not friendship, not the touch of your hand, not even a smile. He could. You can't do this. I won't permit it. You've had your chance to stop it long ago. Now, Kathy, you can think of me as Isabella's husband and be glad for my happiness as I was for yours. For before this day is out, she shall be my wife. It's preposterous, Kathy. Isabella wouldn't run off like that. Don't be a fool, Edgar. You've got to stop her. She went out an hour ago. It may be too late. Then go after them. Bring her back. Kill him if you have to. Kathy. <laughs> it can't be. Do you hear me? This marriage can't happen. It's a sin. It's a vile sin. <laughs> Kathy, you don't care about Isabella at all. No, that isn't true. It's him. It's his marriage that you want to stop. What difference does it make? Just stop them! <laughs> stop them! <laughs> stop them! <laughs> but nothing would stop them. A devil was loose, clawing at the roots of our lives, ripping them from the earth, tearing them apart, piece by broken piece. Heathcliff was married to Isabella in a terrible sickness, horrible sickness, swept my heart. Oh, Kathy, I can't be happy with anybody but you. Then we'll be happy here, together. Let's never leave our castle. Never. Never. I've stayed here to be beaten like a dog. Abused and cursed and driven mad, but I'll stay to the end with you, to live and die under Pennistone Crag. Kathy, Kathy. No, no. Edgar, oh, don't leave me. I won't, Kathy. You've been ill, so ill. 
Try to get well, Kathy. Try. Wuthering Heights is a dull place for a young girl. I'm waiting. For what? To be happy. Once this house was happy. I thought, Isabella, that's, what, that's when you would come here, things would change. No, only I've changed. Helen, bottle, quick. Yes, Mr. Hindley. <laughs> Isabella, doomed you are. There'll be a new life here. I'll make it. Not with him. He hates me more than he hates you. Every time he kisses you, his heart breaks because it isn't Kathy's. He'll change. He'll forget. Not until he's dead. Isabella, why don't you do it? Why don't you do what I have been too weak to do on my own? Kill the beggar. I'll get a gun. Stop it! Kill him. No! While there's still hope for your soul, and a bullet in his brain, and we'll be free. Excellent, Hindley. Excellent. Oh, don't be surprised, my dear. I came through the back to shake the snow from my boots. Hindley, that's the first lucid talk I've heard out of you in weeks. Not very Christian talk, but at least it's sensible. I tried to stop him. Most dutiful. Do it myself. Someday, kill you myself. Heathcliff, why do you have him here? I can't breathe when he's in this house. But I breathe all the easier. What better pleasure than to share a roof with Hindley and see the life oozing out of his corrupt body? Get out of here, Hindley. Get a drink. Hey, let him get me a bottle. Don't you see, darling? You poison yourself with hating him. Send him away. Let love come back into this house. Why is there always a shadow across your face? If you only let me near you, you're not as horrible as they all think. You're full of pain, but I can make you happy. Oh, let me, let me make you happy. Why are your eyes always empty, like Edgar's eyes? They aren't, Heathcliff. If you only look deeper. Look, I'm pretty, and I love you. Let your heart look at me once. What is life but hunger and pain? A naked runner and a storm of spears. So I do it? Kill you? I told you to get out of here. Go back to the stables. Kill you? With what? Where's your weapon? Not your shaking hand. Weapon? Tell you truth. About Kathy. Kathy? What about? Don't listen to him, Heathcliff. Shut He's up! He's drunk and what lying! About Kathy? Dying? Dead soon? Be master again? Do as I please. Kathy? Dying? My Ellen, home. bring my coat! You're not going, Heathcliff. Ellen! The rascal in this table. She belongs to Edgar. I've seen dead and drink if she dies, the let her die in his arms. Sullen. Where they belong, let her die. Cursed. Whole house is cursed. Kathy. My own sweet Kathy. <coughs> Edgar. Yes, my darling. The Moors. The Moors are green now, aren't they? No, Kathy. It's winter. But I can smell. I can smell the heather in the air. There's a beautiful patch near the castle. Near the castle? What castle? <laughs> and pennies don't crack. He's great, knows. Kathy. Oh, Kathy. You came. I knew you were. Heathcliff, I think 
I think it best that, that, that you stay with her. I'll send for the doctor. Kathy, oh, my life. I prayed for you to come. Oh, don't let me go. If only I could hold you till we were both dead. Kathy. Will you forget me? Heathcliff, will you ever say I loved her long ago and wept to lose her? But it is all past. How can I forget my life? If you die, Kathy, there'll be no peace for me. Kathy, I'm strong, strong enough to bring us both back to life. If you want to live. No, because while you hold me, I forget what life is. I want to die. Kathy, you've broken your own heart. Kathy, Kathy, you love me. What right had you to throw that away? Forgive me, Heathcliff. I forgive you for what you've done to me, but I'll never forgive what you've done to yourself. I've loved you always. I'm yours. I've never been anyone else's. And not even death will part us. Can you see the crack from the window? Our castle. Yes, Kathy. I'll wait for you to come. Kathy. Kathy! Oh, God! Kathy, come back! Oh. Kathy, why? Our why? Castle. Our castle. And you were king. And I was queen. Hear me now, Kathy. I'll not live out a single day without you. I'll know no peace, no light, nor rest. There'll be no second when I soul doesn't cry out, Kathy! Kathy! She's dead. Yes. You killed my sister. Said I was a coward. That I couldn't kill you. But I can. Kathy. May your soul never know rest. Ka Kathy! Isabella? Edgar! Edgar! Are you out of your mind? What? To let Kathy out of the house. Kathy? I saw her coming across the moors in a summer dress and Heathcliff with his arm around her. Yes. They're together now. I galloped after them to the foot of Pettistone Crag, but they just disappeared and I couldn't find them. They found each other. That's enough. Thank you for a most dramatic performance. That concludes this evening's performance of the FMAC Retro Radio Show. A big thank you to all our sponsors. And we'd like to thank you all for joining us. Be sure to return for FMAC's next production, the onstage children's pr production of the acclaimed Disney's musical, Newsies Junior. Auditions for children aged 6 to 18 will be held February 15th and 19th. Gracie, what are you doing? Getting my coffee. Well, Gracie, we're not quite finished yet. But say, a nice hot cup of coffee would hit the spot right now. Boy, I sure wish I had a cup of that rich, delicious Rivers coffee. Rivers coffee is roasted in-house and always go to the last sip. I just made my own coffee at home. All I see are brown ice cubes. Sure, that's my own idea. You see, the minute the coffee starts to boil, I freeze it. Then when it melts, it's nice and hot. So listen, my friend Mimi won't believe me when I tell her. So you tell her. Tell her what? Well, tell her it's true. It's true? Ah, uh, you see? Well, what's true? What I just told Mimi. Well, tell me. Oh, no, you'd never believe it. 
So, Gracie, are you trying out for Newsies Junior? Yes, I love that show. You know what I really hope we do soon is the Christmas Carol. Oh yeah, how does that story go again? Once upon a time, on a beautiful Christmas morning, Scrooge and Bob Cratchit and Tiny Tim went for a walk in the woods while their breakfast was cooling. So, while they were gone, a dear little girl came and knocked on their door. And naturally, nobody answered, so she went inside to see who it was, and... That's not the way I heard it. Who told you? My mother. Oh, well, this is by Dickens. So, this little girl saw the breakfast cooling, and she decided to taste it. She tried the first bowl, and it was too hot. And she tried the second bowl, and it was too cold. And she tried the third bowl, and it was just right. And she ate it all up. That was Goldilocks. No, it was porridge. Well, <laughs> anyway, this poor little girl had two rich stepsisters, and then along came Prince Charming with a glass slipper. So, he tried it on the first stepsister, and it was too hot. And he tried it on the second <laughs> stepsister, and it was too cold. And he tried it on the poor little girl, and it just fit. And she married him, and guess who got all the money? Walt Disney. <laughs> Say, the Roxy's playing a movie after this. Oh, really? Yeah. Would you like to see the 355 with Penelope Cruz and Jessica Chastain? I'd rather see it with you and Chris. Say goodnight, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Once again, a big thank you to all our cast. Thank <laughs> you. 